two down opens on Tuesday and Wednesday, and they bought the dip. Traded down a little night in Taiwan Semiconductor comes to the rescue. AI chip stocks on a tear. Mark Chaikin, 815, give his view on the market. Mark's still bullish. It's Thursday. Let's get it going, Aaron. Pre-market prep starts right now. All right, good morning, traders and investors. As I mentioned, we're trading into green 18 and a quarter handles at 47, 89 and a quarter. Let's see if we can get back over 4,800. The buck taking down a little bit today, a little down, only 11 cents, 103.10. Bonds flat, 120 and 24, 30 seconds. Crude holding steady, up 13 cents, 72.61. Gold, that's in the green by 9.30. Two thousand fifteen and eighty cents. Silver up a nickel, twenty two seventy two. Bitcoin down again, trying to hold support here. Down four hundred twenty dollars at forty two thousand three hundred and ninety. Let's bring in Triple D here on this Thursday morning, Dennis. And uh, if there's one thing that you've been consistent about over the last couple of weeks is tech and AI, and that's what's leading us this morning. Uh, the same story continues to lead. And, you know, you can thank Taiwan Semiconductor overnight for really, you know, sparking the chip rally here overnight. But, I mean, it's about a story. What's going to be the story of 2024? I think it's going to be AI again. That's why I remain long those stocks, long NVIDIA, long AMD, long SMCI, want to be long more chips, looking for more things to be long in the AI trade. I think it's all about the AI trade. I mean, you're going to get pops and other stocks, but I still think at the end of the day and the end of the year here, it's the AI stocks that are going to drive the bus. All right. Good morning to you, Aaron. And uh, we'll bring Aaron in. Aaron Bree, our new producer of the show, as uh, Mitch has decided to move on. Uh, we'll bring on Aaron here. And uh, Aaron, how are you doing on this uh, Thursday morning? I'm good. Good morning, everyone. Sorry to anyone who had trouble finding the stream or it said it was starting later today. Don't know why that happened on YouTube, but we've got it fixed now. Uh, yeah, like you guys mentioned, TSM. I mean, these these chip stocks, the AI trade does not seem over yet. Uh, TSM's earnings, the revenue actually came in lower on a year over year basis. Uh, and you and you rarely see a stock trading up this highly after uh, reporting revenue that's down year over year. Uh, but when the company says, hey, we're going to do 20% more revenue next year than we did last year uh that's gonna that's gonna help investors get a little bullish so tsm Big came time. out came out with that uh you know basically said hey ai demand is going uh to drive our revenue higher next year looking at like the monthly chart joel or the one you've got in the bottom yeah. right i mean this thing is still not at all-time highs like nvidia and and amd no, are um, I mean, is that to you? Do you think this thing's going to be able to get up there, kind of catch up? It's been lagging these other names. <laughs> I mean, it's a long way. I mean, those 2021 and 2022 prices. Yeah. I mean, so a lot of stocks has gotten back to those levels. So it's hard to argue that it won't. That's still 30, 40 bucks away. I think the uh, uh, the Taiwan China situation has probably kept people a little bit more reserved yeah. on this stock. Don't you agree with that, Dennis? No. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the main reason why it trades with the depressed multiple, maybe compared to. But chips, you know, typically trade in the teens. A lot of the chips aren't like 27 times forward earnings or somebody tweeting out, Trend Spider tweeting out this morning, AMD's P is 1300. Well, that's looking at trailing P. We know if we look forward, it's about 55, which, you know, is a premium multiple here. But Taiwan Semiconductor has never gotten a lot of love from the multiple perspective. It's 4P is 16 here right now, which is quite reasonable. 
Um, the one issue which you cite, though, is, you know, we don't know where China's going. We don't know if there's an eventual invasion. We don't know any of this stuff. So that's why I think it does stay with a little bit of a lighter multiple. Okay, pre-market high. I'll just give you that right up the high of the session. That comes in at uh, one. Wow, did that get up to one fourteenth? That can't be right. Yeah, one eleven thirty one. Sorry, my eyes are a little bit bad. That's your pre-market high. Nothing on the monthlies here. So a lot of the price action, you know, took place when the initial news came out. Still price discovery here. Keep an eye on that one eleven area from a monthly perspective. I'll just say a close over 110 here. That was a monthly high back in early 2022. Uh, you know, holding 110. I'll call that support, you know, even though it's up eight bucks. Uh, but Invi this is good for NVIDIA. NVIDIA up 12 bucks. Just I got to get rid of this retracement. And uh, also good for AMD here, 493. So this <laughs> is just, just uh, confirming the trend. It's been in place. I mean, Marvell, where do you want to go? It's 100 right. chip stocks, and you can look at all of them here this morning. At Broadcom, AVGO, wherever you want to go. Qualcomm's trading up 2% if we're just going to some major companies here. I mean, the chip run continues. I don't see any reason why the, why the chip run gets derailed. You know, maybe it's fire exhaustion at a certain point in time. But, you know, on that last pullback that we were talking about a week and a half ago, I said, I got Marvell on the list. Didn't strike. Should have. Wish it would, would have. When it's down to $56, 10 wow. trading. So it's now $67. Buy good companies that are storied stocks at reasonable valuations. And you can't seem to go wrong in this market. Well, it's not all good news and revenue raises this morning. Uh, we did get some soft revenue guidance from Humana, uh, ticker HUM, oh, stock oh, trading oh. down wow. this morning and bringing some of its peers with it. <laughs> UNH, United Healthcare trading lower as well. Um, so, I mean, this thing's getting crushed and you typically don't see Humana kind of more of like a stodgy, you, you know, doesn't really move this much down 14%. I mean, if you were someone that was holding like weekly puts in this thing with, because the expected move, there's no way it was, it was supposed to be this. No. Uh, well, good luck. Yeah. I mean, I mean exercise the, the, here. the puts are probably up, you know, I'd guess a, cool. a lot, 5,000%. Um, yeah. Let's go luck. So just the weeklies and again, weekly. So yeah, obviously we're on option expiration. So we can look to tomorrow's expiration here. 447 and a half went off the board at three box, $3 and 50 cents. <laughs> so you're talking like a just phenomenal amount of money that you're making. If you decided that you were going way out and open interest, I'm just trying to look at the open interest. They weren't super high on any of these 492 contracts, 598. This isn't like NVIDIA where it's trading like Yeah, crazy. the market's not going to be. Yeah, it's yeah. not as interested. But I mean, you had 425s were going for a nickel. So <laughs> those nickels are now worth $42. Holy I mean, shit. you know, obviously overnight windfall here. This wasn't scheduled though. So unless you knew something. Right. Yeah, are, that those are probably going off the board. And again, I don't see any unusual options activity. I was like, whoa, look at this trade that occurred. That was here. actually one, one of my favorite slash best trades was a couple years ago uh, into an earnings cycle. I bought weekly puts on Clorox, uh, ticker CLX. <laughs> Yeah. And they reported like a terrible earnings, and the stock dropped like twenty percent. Like, it, and and Clorox, same thing. It's like it wasn't supposed to move that much because it's not a tech stock, not Nvidia, you know, nothing like that. And the yeah. uh, they, they went up astronomically. I mean, I, I had like three or four hundred dollars in that trade, and ended up selling all the puts for like ten grand. It was insane. And then you know, tried to. And then you were addicted to options trading ever since. Yeah, and lost it all. You know, gave it all back. <laughs> hey, that, you know, the the, the 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 Clorox trade, it still worked. It was good, and you know, there was it was a fun morning for me that morning. Sure. Uh, but yeah. So Humana expects to report about twenty six dollars in adjusted EPS for uh for the the year end twenty twenty three. Uh, and the expectations were for twenty eight dollars and a quarter. So that's a pretty big adjustment in terms of of what they're projecting for EPS. Uh, and then again, just softer guidance. The 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 whole thing not good. United Healthcare trading down as well. Joel. What are we what are we seeing on the chart? Oh CNC man, C that... trading down, <laughs> CVS trading down, Molina Healthcare is to offer down eight bucks. MOH, this entire sector is going to be in shambles here this morning. The XLV trading down zero point seven three percent. I had some XLV in my overnight portfolio on the day trading side, and that's getting hammered here too. 
Um, I've already taken the loss on that. I mean, what are you going to do? Humana's on an open down 63 points. XLV is going to get hit, and there's nothing you can do about it. So sometimes, you know, if you're just on the wrong side overnight, what do you do? You just eat the loss and move on. Uh, I like this Humana chart. I mean, naturally down 64 bucks. I, you know, I can't think about shorting it, even though it might be the right thing to do. But you are coming into some monthly support. I'll just say like that this 380 to 384 area. I mean, if you did have those puts or you were short to stock and you want to hold out for more, go right ahead. Kind of feels like might be one of those days where. You put the pre-market low in, and then you never you, you don't see that level during the regular session. But uh, 380 to 385, I'll call it, to me that'd be a just a natural buy zone. I don't care about the news. Uh, but there you go for uh, Humana, UNH. These things moved. The other thing too is these things moved up nicely yesterday. Uh, I saw the UNH was up. The Humana, I believe, was up on the day too. So that just puts more hurt to people. You know, that, wow, we came off the 430 bottom. And then uh, ELV, I saw that trading down uh, 591. So down we'll see. Bucks. Keep an eye on your pre-market lows on that one. That's the best thing I can, uh, I, best information I can give you. Dennis, yeah, so you... again, just go ahead. What were you going to ask me, AB? No, no, you go ahead. I was going to, I was going on. I was just going to sum up again, you know, the sector here in shambles, obviously, this morning as well. So CNC trading down 5.6%. CVS. Huge lower beta name trading down 5.1% here too, down $4. So it's getting hammered too. Um, and then you're going to get into ELV, which you just mentioned, Joel, which is down 28 points as well. Not a good morning for these healthcare providers. Joel, or uh, sorry, Dennis, I saw you talking in the chat about it the other day. When you went to the hospital, when you had the, the flu, it was, you had $0 you had to pay for anything? Yeah, out of pocket is zero. I pay my taxes, obviously. So what we have in Canada is called OHIP, Ontario Health Insurance Plan. Every single person born in Ontario has this. And obviously, a big portion of our tax dollars go towards it. So yeah, so when we go to the hospital, we don't pay anything. That's, a, I mean, that's insane. We do pay drugs. We do pay for pills, drugs. Like people believe, because in the UK, drugs are covered too. That's not the case in Canada. We do pay for our drugs. Although it is the case if you're under 25, um, you can get the majority of your drugs covered. So if you're okay. under 25, and is it true 25 that you see, and 65, you pay for your drugs. And is it true you see like a large number of Canadians come to America for medical care? Um, if in the border cities, yes, because Canada, the one thing about free health care is it gets abused. So, you know, you get a sniffle, you go to the doctor. People don't tough it out because they're like, oh, I'm going to the doctor just to make sure. If you're paying out of pocket, a lot of those people would stay home. So what you have is emergency lineups, four or five, six hours, sometimes even longer. Um, hard to get into your doctor. Like for me to get into my regular doctor is at least two weeks. So, I mean, you know, the, the healthcare system is very taxed. And a lot of that has to do with it's free. Yeah, so from you have what, a lot from of what people read, going in for sniffles. From what I've read, it's also a lot of specialized care, right? If you want to see the best knee doctor in, in the States, people will come down for a surgery or something like that. But for normal stuff, they'll, they'll typically stay there. Um, Joel, who do we got coming on today for our special guest? Oh, I just want to say, for your medical care, you get what you pay for there, Dennis, right? Uh, let's uh, bring in Mark Chaikin, uh, Chaikin Analytics. He brings uh, his Chaikin uh, money flow and his other a uh, analytics to the show every two weeks. Let's bring on Mark. Good morning, Mr. Chaikin. Uh, we have a. Where are we there? Where are we? Uh, we're Sandy and I are taking a little holiday in New York City, so we're at the Lowe's nice. Regency on Park Avenue. Very nice. All New right. York is alive and well, by the way. I don't know what this gloom and doom about New York City is, but there are stores open. Yeah. Up. Are you going to see a show, Mark? Pardon? Are you going to see a show? Not this time. The seats are so uncomfortable. I don't want to, uh, you know. Oh, I know. It, first, the bubble of Broadway, but uh, it, normally we would. It was funny during COVID when you had a lot of people moving out of the city. People were very quick to write obituaries for the city of New York, and then you know, next thing you know, you're looking at rent prices, and it's still five thousand dollars to to live in New York. So it's like, well, I guess some people still want to live here because it's it's Crazy. certainly not certainly not cheap. And J.P. Morgan's building the largest uh, skyscraper in America, office building in America right now. Down really? 
Wow. That Jamie Dimon, are they going to call it Diamond Towers? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> corporate corporate real estate potentially making a, a comeback. Well, Mark, uh, last time we spoke, you were, I think, pretty bullish. Are you still feeling good about these markets? We've hit some turbulence. I have. Well, the Fed is driving the bus. And yesterday we got some clarity from Waller into what Powell is really thinking. Uh, and, you know, they see no reason to rush the rate cuts. And so uh, those wild forecasts of five to six rate cuts this year, you know, pretty much off the table. But sometime in the second half, we are probably going to get three rate cuts. And that put a little pressure on the market. What's interesting is tech stocks have not been pressured by the higher rates in the 10 year. And typically over the last 18 months, that's been a very direct relationship. 10 year yields move up, tech stocks get pressured because of PE valuation concerns. And that's not the case. You've got a very strong rally going on, obviously, in semiconductors, AMD, and videos, all making new highs. And so I am still bullish, and it's the same support level that Joel and I talked about two weeks ago. It's 40, well, the 21-day the average has moved up, which is what we bounced off yesterday at 47.21 on the S&P cash. Uh, but the 4680, 4700 area is still where I think this uh, support continues to manifest. And uh, we're up in the futures this morning, unless something's changed radically in the last 15 minutes. And so uh, they're going to give it another shot. Okay, hey, just going back, I, now I see they're kind of taking the, uh, uh, the, the March rate cut um, off the table. I mean, the data, the data is just not coming in to say, you know, to support any rate cuts right now. I mean, I'm kind of, about, I, I, obviously people are now getting skeptical about March, but man, maybe even June, you think they're going to be, or, or even later than that. I mean, it's uh, a lot of expectations. I'm still kind of like trying to get my head around, you know, the last Fed meeting. You know, when you get the Fed pivot here, I mean, is it market have too much? Is there too much already built into these rate cuts for us to be able just to mount a major rally here from 4,800? No, I think we can, but I think probably the first half of the year is going to be pretty rocky. I'm a big fan of the January barometer, but I use it in a different way. You know, if you break January down into five day sessions, that typically shows you what the quarters are going to look like. So now what the market is saying is the first half of the year is going to be a little bit rocky, which is typical of an election year, and then we'll probably finish strong. So I, I think once the market adapts to the fact that these crazy predictions of six rate cuts are really not realistic, uh, buyers will come back in. But clearly the buyers have been on strike here. And um, I, I think... Uh, you've got to look at a positive outlook for the for a presidential election year, but that's typically uh, back end weighted. Got it. Well, Mark, are there any uh, individual names right now that you've you've been watching that you think could start driving the bus, or are we kind of just all uh, you know all at the mercy of the Fed right now? No, it's a stock picker's market. So biotech in the healthcare sector is just on fire. And, you know, I'm looking at stocks like Gilead, uh, which has been pretty dormant for the last two wow. years. Uh, I'm looking at the bigger names like Regeneron, where I think there's long-term visibility into their pipeline. Um, there are a lot of biotech stocks. You, you've got to do some picking and choosing. Uh, but that's a fruitful area. Also think a stock you mentioned, CVS, is a buy here. We recommended it last week in one of our um, newsletters. And I just like their business model. They got hit initially when United Health uh, reported a week ago. They're getting hit this morning because of the Humana report. But they've got a really good business model with the retail uh, the Aetna and then their uh, pharmacy benefit management program. And, and it's pretty much a third, a third, a third. This is, a, I think people, if, you, if you're in the Northeast, you think of it as, you know, painkillers, prescription drugs, but they're almost a $400 billion company and it's divided up between those three segments. So I like CVS on this pullback. I like Triple M, which is pulling back a bit. 
And software is not quitting. So I think there are a lot of names in software and, and you could almost throw a pin at the software names that are making money and make money. One that I like, which has now a, a neutral plus power gauge rating is Synopsys, SNPS. They've taken a lot of heat for this ANSYS merger. These are two great companies combining. It had a bullish power gauge rating until it dipped below its long-term trend line. But I think uh, Synopsys is well positioned to support the semiconductor market where they provide software for manufacturers of semiconductors. And ANSYS is a great company. And, you know, the debate about whether they're paying too much or not will all, you know, dissipate over the next year. But I, I think Synopsys is a steal down here. Got you it. You can see New York energizes me. I mean, this is not, you know, the country and, and birds singing in the morning. This is like high energy <laughs> territory. Mark, what do you think 2024 is going to be more of a stock picker's market here again? Because 2023 definitely was until the last couple months of the year when they decided to start buying everything. Do you think like, I mean, I look at certain stocks like NVIDIA, AMD, new all-time highs here again today. This AI trade continues to drive the bus. And then you look at the IWM breaking down uh, pretty much the entire year, made a new low yesterday. Dip did get bought. Dip is getting bought here overnight. Do we eventually go into this market of buy everything again, or is this going to be a stock picker's market? Definitely a stock picker's market. Uh, you nailed it. And, you know, I, I think people need to know that IWM is very sensitive to, to interest rates. Mm -hmm. Smaller companies are just not as flexible in terms of capital raise and uh, interest rates affect them more than uh, the large cap sector. And, uh, I do think it's a stock picker's market and, uh, you know, the power gauge has done a good job of figuring out where the fundamental strengths are and where the, where the group strengths are. So if you go with financials, um, I think healthcare, you've got to split it and you've been talking about that biotech, very, very strong, uh, in healthcare, but the big providers obviously under pressure and, uh, and tech. Uh, beyond that, it's really a stock picker's market. When you get into industrials, which may be breaking down, you know, look at the XLI, and, and yeah. you've got to avoid cons uh, defensive stocks. They're just um, remembering that healthcare is a, is a hybrid, of part growth, part defensive. But staples, utilities, uh, just out to lunch and likely to stay that way for quite a while. So those are what you're avoiding. Anything else you're avoiding, Mark? Not really uh, in terms of group and sector, but definitely tuned in to finding the, the, the strongest stocks in the strongest industry groups. I mean, uh, Dennis is absolutely right. It's, it's not going to be a buy everything market. You know, that happened when people realized that rate cuts, or that rate hikes had finished and they just threw money uh, into the ETFs, the SPY and uh, QQQ. But I, I'm a little surprised uh, that it's really in the large cap names. If you look at the 10 different ETFs that reflect the various um, cap and, and uh, style sectors, it, it's Dow Jones with a very bullish rating. It's the, uh, the old 100 OEX. It's the S&P, and it's definitely not small caps or mid caps right now. What about DraftKings? It's having a pretty good day here this morning. I didn't see a headline here, but it's up another 5%. It seems like this stock on pullbacks always finds a buyer here. Are you a fan of the online sports betting? Uh, not me personally, but <laughs> millions of people are. Uh, DraftKings has had a bearish rating in the power gauge. I haven't checked it in the last week or so. Uh, I wouldn't chase strength in this name. I remember going back to uh, post-COVID when the power gauge turned bearish on the stock at 50 on the way down to 10 bucks, that every market they opened up in, they lost more money. So maybe the long-term uh, online gaming picture is bright, but if it's rallying on the fact that they're getting approvals and opening for business in different states, that's a a loss leader for them. So it may not be a, a smart move to chase strength in, in stocks like uh, DraftKings. Any other stocks you're watching into earnings this uh, this quarter that uh, you think could really blow it out of the water when it comes to, to their earnings report? 
Well, that's an interesting question, yes, because the response, as it was in the last quarter, uh, last part of the last year, uh, to earnings reports has been very muted at best, and, you know, it's basically sell the news uh, in most of the cases. So I'm not really looking for stocks to, you know, bust out based on a positive earnings surprise. You know, analysts were pretty mellow coming into this quarter. Uh, for the last seven quarters, they've been very negative and cutting their estimates. This time, they were much more measured. They cut, but barely. And so I don't think the surprise factor is going to be a big um, boost for any individual names here. I mean, occasionally, you know, if an Apple comes through with a good report or any of the big names, you may see a pop. But smaller names, I mean, one stock we have recommended for two years, <clears throat> Progress Software, PRGS, reported two days ago, and it had a really nice um, response to the earnings report. Uh, but it's really um, looking for a needle in a haystack right now in terms of earnings related pops. How about the reaction so far to Q uh, to Q4 earnings? JP Morgan, pretty good report. I mean, that's always volatile off its reports, but uh, made a new all time high and pulled back a little bit. So, but uh, selling into the good news on that. Uh, Delta, on the other hand, that had a nice run up to 42 and then. Uh, I mean, there's other things been going on with the storms and everything. But what do you think about the the reaction, the overall reaction here uh, from Q4 earnings season? Well, it's it's been sell the news if it's been good, and you know, hammer it if it's been bad. So that's not a great prescription for trading into earnings reports. Although you know, we we do occasionally see a stock that pulls back before an earnings report that has a bullish power gauge rating and a history of earnings surprise that are positive, but I, I just don't think this is the quarter to be trading earnings. I think this is the quarter to be buying dips and some of the solid names we've talked about and uh, position yourself for a stronger second half. I, I don't think this is gonna be a wildly profitable two or three months from a trading point of view. Mark Chaikin of Chaikin Analytics joins our show every other Thursday to give his fundamental and technical outlook on the markets. Mark. Always enjoyable. Have a good time there in New York City. Spend some money there. Support the economy. We'll dial you up in a couple of weeks. Okay. All good, guys. Uh, nice dynamic on the set. I like it. Well done. <laughs> Appreciate it, Mark. We'll talk soon. Uh, yeah. One thing with New York City, probably not going to have trouble spending money there. I mean, that is the one thing. I like. I love to spend time there, but you go out for like a, a drink and dinner or something. Next thing you know, boom, that's your whole paycheck. Um, all right, we do have a lot of economic data coming out at 8.30 here in a couple minutes. We've got initial jobless claims. I'll have those numbers. Uh, Philadelphia Fed manufacturing survey, housing starts, building permits. Uh, and then later in the day at about 12.05 p.m., we will have uh, the Atlanta Fed president, Rafael Bostic, speaking. So oh, lots of things to watch out for today. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was it was great to talk to Mark see his outlook still bullish. Triple D, you going wide here? Uh, you going wide? You did the mute trick. I do the mute trick. You do the Should mute I? trick. Should I go wide? Uh, I mean, housing. I mean, if you got any housing stocks on. Yeah. Uh, nah. Okay. Ch Triple D. Triple D not going wide. We'll go to the one minute here. Pick housing me off, tears. Citadel, yeah. not your mercy. <laughs> Come and get me. Come and Come get and me, get Kenny. Me. Come and get me, Kenny. <laughs> he's like, I'm ready. Bang, bang, bang. Kenny wins again. He always wins. <laughs> he's referring to Ken Griffin Ken over there at yeah. Citadel. Oh, uh, oh, I should have went wide. <laughs> big, 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 big. Bang, bang, bang. Feld, 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 feld. All right. Okay. 8.30. Let's see, if we're, headlights now. let's see if we're going to get any initial reactions to the to the data. Pulling up my news feed in Benzinga Pro. We haven't... Uh, we're still waiting on, on these initial jobless claims. There we go. Building permits comes in hot. Building permits slightly higher. USA housing starts comes in a little bit lower than expected. Jobless claims comes in way lower than expected. 187,000 jobless claims versus 207 at, uh, uh, estimated. Uh, prior was 203,000. So 187. So showing the labor market still uh, still strong. Not really seeing this is a sign, at least, that we're not going to see unemployment skyrocket anytime soon. Uh, again, initial jobless claims coming in 
lower than the expected number. I think that's one the one that's probably the most important out of all these data points that we're getting this morning. Uh, a little bit of a chop here. I mean, you know, we've had a 30-point a rally off the low. So you did you did see some offers out there. Uh, did not make a new high at 47.93. But uh, then again, you got a little bit of a hit. So I think we are about exactly where we were at uh, when the number came out. So a uh, pretty good call there, Dennis, on uh, not being much of it. I mean, we're, we're seeing the same thing. The, the economy is hanging in there uh housing starts was it kind of mixed uh, yeah so the building the building permits was hotter than expected slightly and then the housing starts was uh uh, actually no the house the housing starts sorry i I misread it the housing starts also came in hotter than expected 1.46 million versus 1.426 million so slight beat there uh again probably the jobless claims is going to be the most uh, mm-hmm. you know, the most looked at number, but that's not, you know, it's not, it's not the real jobs data, you know, non-farm payrolls numbers that the market loves to look at, but it'll still give us some insights into the labor market. Uh, another headline we talked about this week that we got, a uh, uh, you know, touch up on Apple. So Apple with, the, oh yeah, with the watch news, um, Apple will start selling today. The, uh, Apple watches without the blood oxygen feature. Uh, And you know what's interesting, guys, is I was reading about what Apple's doing with this. So the feature will still show up on people's watches, but when they click on it, it's going to take them to a, 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 an explanation on Apple's website. Instead of them just taking the, I don't know why they had to do that with the software update instead of just taking that feature completely off the app or off the watch. Um, but they are going to be able to start selling their watch again. The stock's trading higher. Probably not why the stock's trading higher. Probably because of the upgrade from Bank of America Securities, upgrading the stock with a price target at 225 Bullish outlook on the Vision uh, Pro uh, headset that's expected to come out next month. So, uh, Apple finally getting a pop here had been trading lower. Uh, how are we looking, Joel? Are we still trading higher? Uh, I first want to get Triple D's uh, comments here on the uh, on the uh, Apple Vision Pro that video yeah. that you saw. So when I was uh, laying in bed for a week with the flu, looking at lots of videos on my phone, just trying to pass the time. Um, I watched the official Apple video of Apple Vision Pro. Um, it's like 10 minutes, you know, and showing you everything that it can do. It's an eye opener, man. I mean, you look at that thing and you're like, it's a jaw dropper. If you have not watched the video of Apple Vision Pro, go watch it. I mean, the stuff that this is going to do is absolutely incredible. Turning your whole basically room into a screen, you know, manipulating, you know, apps with your eyes, just clicking and looking with your eyes. I mean, it's a game changer. I, I, I don't love the fact you got to put this bulky thing on your head. I think that is still a deterrent. I could see eventually them coming out with like a pair of glasses or something that does the same thing. And when they do that, everybody's going to buy it. Um, so I don't know. So the bulkiness of it's the one thing that would turn me off. But I'm telling you, the technology here is incredible. It is probably a game changer. It's going to allow us to do so many different things, you know, from sporting events, being able to be in the stadium, to, you know, obviously, you know, business meetings don't fly across the world. You just get on your Apple Vision Pro or whatever it is. And, you know, you're there, basically. You're in the room. You'll feel like you're in the room. You'll feel like I'm sitting right beside Joel O'Connor doing the show with him. So, I mean, it's it's a game changer. It's game changing technology. So, I am, you know, and, and last time I was that excited about an Apple product, really, was probably back, you know, with the iPhone days, obviously. Um, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. They've been milking the iPhone for so long. It's pretty much been, you know, the obviously, you know, the driver of Apple's growth for the last 10 to 12, 15 years, even you could say. Um, I do think once they get this technology not so bulky, once they continue to come out, you know, like a, let's say you have an, you know, an eyeglasses version of this, it's a game changer. So it's an eye opener. Is Apple worth 28 times earnings? I, I, I don't think you're getting it down at 21. Uh, Gene, this is what Gene uh, was talking about uh, when we had him at the end of the year special. He it was like, like, you know, we were pressing him hard, like, what, you know, what's the, you know, what's the new thing? And he he was very confident in this uh, <laughs> Apple Vision Pro. Uh, cool what uh, I just how how is it different? What was uh, uh, Zuck's? Uh, what what were those things called? The Meta Quest. 
Uh, yeah. So, so I, from what I can understand, the meta quest is more like gaming oriented. Like it's, you know, you can play a lot of video games, okay. do this virtual reality stuff. Whereas the, the thing that Dennis is talking about from Apple is designed to really be your computer but like in your whole thing. So if you wanted to, Joel, you could put this thing on from Apple, go to your email inbox. It'll pop up like a virtual keyboard and you could be responding to emails all in this all in this headset thing without ever actually opening your computer. So if you want to just use it as your like day-to-day -day computer, uh, it's, it's more designed for that as opposed to that. I think some of that stuff you can still do on the meta, like surf the web and, and whatnot, but... Um, it, it seems to me like Apple's is designed more so for everyday use, whereas Meta's, again, uh, seem to be more heavy on the gaming side. Uh, it, it just makes me change my opinion of Apple. You know, I'm like, why am I paying 28 or 29 times earnings for Apple with no growth? While this product could eventually equal a hell of a lot of growth there. Yeah, and I see so, people talking in the chat about that, hey, this it's going to be too expensive, you know, it might be a nice toy for the rich, but not the, you know, average public is going to be. And I think yeah. people have felt that way about a lot of Apple products in the past, whether you're talking about MacBook Pros or iPhones saying, oh my God, who's going to buy a phone for $1,200 or, you know, when like some of those iPhones came out, when you could go buy a Nokia for 200 well, guess what? People ponied up and paid for it. So again, I've just learned throughout, you know, the past decade or so that when it when it seems like, you know, Apple might not know what they're doing or it might be too expensive or this or that, just just wait, just let it play out because Apple typically, uh, you know, typically delivers on these sort of things. And if if Tim Cook and the company's making a big bet on this, um, then I'm not going to bet against it and saying I don't think people are going to go out and really yeah. buy this. I think, and and just to sum it up here again, I think the technology is fantastic. I don't think a lot of people are going to love putting that bulky thing on their head. And I think once they get this product, let's say the second, third version of this, once they get this product down to the size of a pair of eyeglasses, that'll be the game changer. Because now I don't mind putting on glasses. I'm going to go, I, I don't need a PC. I just go like this. I put my computer on and I've got the PC all around me. Apple, you need the Vision Pro to look like this. When you can do that, people are going to buy it. We shall see. And again, I mean, people talking about the price. An iPod, when it came out in like the <laughs> early 2000s, was $400 at that time. So that's probably what, like nine hundred dollars today for an mp3 player and people were still buying them so i mean yeah. uh apple's I'm always 99 cents for a song they could download for free but people did it because it was a clean version and they didn't feel guilty about it yeah on the itunes store oh that's bringing me back to the to, to to the days dennis when you had to download stuff from the itunes store i used to that was a big you know fighting point for me and my parents as they'd get home and see all these charges like, hey i needed that album i needed to yeah a, uh, ab you said uh uh, that uh, over the past decade. So, uh, were you following Apple in uh, elementary school, or uh... <laughs> yeah. I guess you've been following for an app uh, a while there. Uh, I'd like to tease you a little bit here. Pre-market high is one eighty-seven and a quarter. We're fifty cents off that. Oh man, seven, six, seven bucks. I would keep an eye on that. The only other relevant level here, if you're looking for more. Uh, is your high on the gap down day was 188.44. So if you look, if if the pre market high is not good enough for you, then you can look for that. Uh, and that's actually the high for the year too at 188.44. So there's taking a look at Apple uh, benefiting from the uh, Bank of America upgrade. There we go. Uh, going back to uh, just looking at the uh, S and P five hundred here, Joel. Looks like we're still kind of chopping. No big move after we, that. Uh, yeah, we did. Dennis, data. did you catch that quick burst, Dennis? We just went up. To, uh, there was was I don't know if there was some latent data or something, but uh, right after the number came out, uh, we popped up to forty seven ninety seven fifty. And then we're leaking just a little bit. I mean, it's only okay. seven handles. Could be one of those days where the high and the low of the day is already in, Dennis. It could be. Um, it could be a choppy day. I do think you're going to see a sustained bid in stock like Apple. I don't think Apple's just going to give it back here today. I think you put some healthy correction in here early in the year. Mm -hmm. You've got a double bottom in place now. The 180 yesterday. Nice double bottom place, so technicals look pretty good here. Now you get the upgrade bringing it back. I think I'd be a pullback on a stock like Apple here from a trading perspective. 
Um, again, how do you argue with AMD and NVIDIA breaking out to new all-time highs? I mean, AMD is up another $5. You can thank Taiwan Semiconductor for some of this. NVIDIA, we talked about the road to 600 It's 574 here now. It's 26 bucks away. It looks like eventually it's going to get there. Um, is it, you know, move too far to chase here? I think so. You get one pullback day where we're down 10 bucks yesterday, and that just gets scooped right up. I mean, this AI story is not going away. No, and that's why I mean I, I I feel like with TSM now it's like would you want to be buying these other names that are at all time highs or TSM which is still a little bit off the highs and they're the ones physically making the chips for all these companies. I mean it's it's when when was TSM's all time high? Was that in uh like twenty twenty one? Yeah, twenty two in January of twenty two. Okay, so that to, was yeah probably while been. the sh- probably while the it was shortage. Taiwan Semiconductor wasn't. In Taiwan. In Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Sorry. will say it does. It does seem like uh, you know at least part of the build back better plan. You know, whatever has been trying to onshore a lot of these semiconductor jobs because, as we saw during COVID, when there was a shortage of semiconductors, they were hard to get. That's when people started realizing. I, mean, I think a lot of people that work in tech and, and know this stuff already knew this but that's when most people realized holy cow these things are in everything from from your refrigerators to your cars to your computers to whatever so relying on an outside country even if it's taiwan is probably not the safest thing in the world so i do think uh you know there has been some efforts to try to bring some of this manufacturing and jobs back on american soil which i think is a good thing um but you know i would rather i think be buying tsm here than these other names Maybe we we keep talking about how Nvidia is still cheap. The forward PE. I mean, how how much does it have to go up every single day before that's not true anymore? Before the valuation is it, it, the earnings have been growing faster than the price can go up. And you know, when I tweeted this out yesterday, which is I didn't fact check this; it was just on Twitter. But it sounds like it could be correct. Talking about the PE. So Brad Freeman on Twitter entering 2023. This was his tweet. Entering 2023, NVIDIA traded for about $145 or roughly 27 times expected calendar 2024 earnings. Today, NVIDIA trades for $565, yet still trades 27 times expected calendar 2024 earnings. So it's literally the price that going up has been all, you know, we talk about multiple expansion. There's been no multiple expansion here. It's been all earnings driven. This the earnings grew that much. So the question is, is it all pull forward? And you know, is the AI story, you know, a bubble? And is, you know, this is you know now, you know, it's gonna be, you know, a lull after the pull forward's gone. That's what the bear argument here is. The bull argument is the AI story is real, and this earnings driven story, and it is an earnings driven story, not a price driven story. This is an earnings driven story, continues. I think it does. I think Nvidia could eventually be a thousand dollar stock among the stock. Well, we had some other earnings news this morning. Birkenstock ticker BRK. Uh, this is a a more recent IPO, and we talked about this <laughs> stock yesterday with Eric Kroll. Uh, missed earnings, stock trading down, getting crushed down fourteen and a half percent. EPS came in and actually beat the estimates, but sales. Or actually, sorry, it was the the earnings weren't, weren't bad. I guess they forecasted down uh, revenues, some soft guidance, uh, warns uh, Birkenstock fall, falls after warning on margin pressure. So either way, I mean, this stock is getting crushed this morning. I'm not in this stock, and I don't think I would be just because I feel like these shoe stocks are so hard to to uh, know what's going to stay hot and what just might be a fad. I mean, you looked at like all bird stock, what happened to that after it IPO'd? And all birds were pretty big for a while. Uh, on on is another one that went public recently, but I kind of stay away from these just because I never know what what's hot right now in shoes. Yeah. Might be you know completely lame a year from now. And I know we talked about this, Dennis. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago with Crocs, that Crocs felt like a fad, but next thing you know, it wasn't a fad, and it's been around for 15 years, and people are still buying them. So Crocs is kind of the exception to me. And all these other shoe companies try to kind of replicate the success you've seen with Crocs, but haven't really been able to. And again, I just don't, you know, I mean, Birkenstocks have been around forever and I don't think, you know, they're really really on the upswing I've had Birkenstocks on my feet all summer for a very long time. Love the shoes. Um, Valuation. We're trading 37 times forward earnings here, folks. If I'm paying 37 times 
earnings for something, it better have an AI story attached to it. That's the biggest issue is that this does not have an AI story attached to it unless you think the shoes are going to start thinking for themselves and then walk you to wherever you want to go. Um, I, I just can't pay 37 times earnings for a shoe store or shoe company. Sorry. Uh-oh, Joel. We got you on the old moot trick. He copied off me. He, but the problem is Joel can't figure out how to unmute himself. He's getting yeah. Uh, so Dennis, I, I remember you uh, uh, walking around in those things, and I mean, I love I'm my a, Birkenstocks. I, I'm a summer guy. I'm a, a sandal guy, and I've tried Birkenstocks on maybe twenty times, and I don't know if they just don't fit my feet, you know, because they have the. You kind of got to break them in, yeah. The ridge. No, right I under can't the, do it. I can't the, do it, man. The ridge just, right under the toe line. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Doesn't that that just bugs me, man? I can't stand that. Holy I God. love the Birkenstocks. I have yeah, Crocs I, and Birkenstocks. I love my Birkenstocks. <laughs> um, I have multiple pairs of Birkenstocks. They're awesome shoes. Again, let's just do. Sometimes it's a good exercise to look at PE. Sometimes when the story is hot. P doesn't matter at all. Birkenstock, IPO, kind of hot. Now, all of a sudden, it's not, you know, this cool IPO thing anymore. It's an actual stock. Trading 37 times earnings. Crocs. I'm going to do it as a comparable. They both make shoes. Crocs is trading eight times earnings. Why is Birkenstock worth 8, 16, 24, 32, almost five times nice. as much as Crocs? Because it's the cool new IPO. But you're not you, you. You don't have the growth to justify that right now, and I think that's the biggest I, thing. I, is, I can't. It, I mean, thirty-seven times earnings for a company that makes shoes is insanity. Yeah. Speaking so of, it's all about valuation, folks. When the story cools off, this Birkenstock story is going to cool off in a hurry. Here, it's cooling off right now. So, if you're buying this dip of forty-three dollars, I think you're early. I think a fair value on a stock like Birkenstock, if you're just doing it a multiple perspective, is fifteen to twenty bucks. Yep, well, so, I mean, be... you're 43 here right now. It wouldn't surprise me if this stock fell another 50% over the course of the year. I hate this stock, actually. I love the shoes. I hate You're going to take those shoes and I... you're going to I love the shoes. <laughs> That's a but call. I'm not that... paying 37 times earnings for those shoes when I can buy Crocs at eight hey, times. Wow. I'd much rather own Crocs. All right. I'll put, a, I'll put a reminder in, in my calendar <laughs> yeah, a couple I months from now it. to check to see where Burke's at because Dennis is Long calling Crocs, down. Bears, short Dennis. Burke. <laughs> I think you make money. Although the Burke, it's hard to be short it. One, the borrow is tough. Two, the the rate last time. Let me go check what the rate is in IB. Um, I actually was trading it the uh, just actually yesterday. Um, Burke, so, Burke's rate six point nine percent. Not crazy, uh, but not that's annualized, so it's not that bad. Six point nine percent. It's not that bad. Major so support. I know Dennis thinks it's going <laughs> to uh, much lower, but just from today's perspective, from short term perspective, man, there is just let's see if those buyers that were there in the lower 41 handle, I'd say I'd be licking my chops at like 41 to 4150. I see how many lows here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight consecutive lows in the 41 handle there. So look at that. That's over here uh, as support. You've taken back half of the move already, so we'll use 40, 44 is very, very minor resistance. But if you're looking for more here on the downside, really like this, let's just call it, uh, see if we can get hit on some bids at uh, 41 and a half there for Birkenstock. I'd rather own Crocs and Burke. Long Croc, short Burke, pair trade, I think makes money. Be cognizant of fees on the short borrow, though, on Burke. There you go. So Dennis, what about, I mean, you mentioned, you know, the PE on, on Burke and you, you know, the, the PE doesn't matter when the story's hot. What about when the PE is reasonable and the story is hot? Uh, like someone, in the, someone in the chat posted about Abercrombie and Fitch ticker ANF. This stock, oh. I mean, looking at the chart has just been an absolute monster. The story's yeah. hot. It's making a comeback. It's cool again. I actually bought stuff from Abercrombie about maybe three, four months ago for the first time in like 10, 15 years. That should have been my sign that I should have saved that money on the clothes I bought from Abercrombie and bought the stock instead. Um, but the PE, forward PE, I just pulled it up, I think is like 15 or something. Uh, and again, the stock's up like 300% in the last year. Uh, you know, the story's hot both in terms of the clothes making a comeback. And also now people are talking about the stock a lot more. Is this something you guys would be? Okay, sorry. PE Forward PE is about 18. 
uh, for Abercrombie and Fitch price to sales 1.3. Uh, I mean, still doesn't seem super expensive. Is this something you'd be cautious chasing up here? Or do you think like, hey, this thing's still got room to run? I think you can chase it as long as that friend is intact. So Joel maybe could do oh, you my a, Lord, a favor. Yeah. Draw the oh. top. Right. Let's blow that shirt up. Let's blow it up a little bit bigger. The top right shirt here. Take your Jeff Mackey purple crayon. You got oh, a purple Blatch. crayon in there. I, I, you Jeff, almost don't even Jeff need a trend right line. The, the, the chart's already the trend line. You can see it right there. Yeah, I know. So Gerald's just going to try to draw it. It's kind of sloppy. I, you're going to have to maybe take a different peek because that one's like, yeah, kind of there. Anyway, yeah, I mean, I maybe. It, yeah, it's Joel's not the your best at drawing these. Jeff was always the best at it. So you got that one. That's way off trend. So you can say it's way above trend. But I mean, too bad I don't have my Apple Vision Pro on. There's, it hasn't even had a sniff of cooling off in January. I thought January effect might slow this stock down. It has not been the case. This stock, when stocks go from 90 to 99, they usually eventually break out through 100 bucks. I got to think this is eventually breaking out through $100. It actually looks like it's consolidating okay, and go down. higher here. So I don't even feel like you're chasing it that much on the short-term trading, you know, if you're looking at really short-term charts. As long as that trend's intact, for, just go from the November low. Take it from the November, November low. low? about October? Because then you're going to see It's a, so a steep, bit. man. I, think I know it's steep. <laughs> like that's a black diamond. And you are chasing it. And it is up 60% in two like, months. If I go up to November low, it's like down to 85, 86. Let me make it simple for you. Below 90, I wouldn't want to own it. If you're long it, you're trailing your stops up. That's what I think you're doing. If you're long this thing, you're just trailing your stops up. Whatever you want to use, your moving average. If you want to use your Jeff Mackey purple crown, whatever you want to use. I'm going to ballpark it at 90 bucks. Below 90, I'd be concerned. As long as the stock's above 90, bull's in complete control. I'm going yeah. to be a, a little bit more of a scaredy cat and say, man, if I had a stop in this thing and I was long it, I'd be looking at the three lows at like at 95.75. I'd be like, okay. You know, even if it ticks like 95.74 and goes back to 120 or whatever, I'd be like, okay. I protected my profits on something like that. And uh, that's sometimes the way to do it. That's an area of uh, two lows, three lows going back from Friday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah, someone in the chat talking about Aritzia as well. That's on the Canadian. That's a Canadian company. A little bit harder to trade here on the OTC markets, but very similar uh, you know, kind of story. The, the clothes now that Abercrombie is making are, are pretty similar to. Uh, what Aritzia is doing, but that stock's been, you what, know, what's that? What's the symbol on that one? Uh, I think I don't even know. ATZAF, I think, is the OTC oh, one. Oh, okay. That's too many. Okay. ATZ. Well, just to show my old age, man, I remember Amercrombie and Fitch. I remember buying like globes and atlases there up at Somerset Mall for a while. Somerset used to be like the big chic, well, it still is the chic mall in the area. I remember going up with my parents on my birthday, going to Amber Combi and Fitch, and they had globes and atlases. It's like all these like cool stuff there. But uh, I guess they've uh, transitioned from that. Uh, old, is, that is it all time high? I believe it is an all time high for AF. And this thing, I mean, you didn't even have to be. I said it was up over 300% for the year. I'm looking at the chart now. You could have bought it in May, six months ago, or seven months ago, and been up more than 330%. So really, all this growth has happened in the past six months. Just a, a violent, violent move to the upside. Like you yeah. said, how steep that chart is. Definitely a black diamond. Having its uh, Dillard's moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, well, we had some other earnings this morning. Uh, Fastenal Company reported uh, stocks are uh, the stocks trading higher after better than expected earnings report and some good, uh, you know, real estate uh, building data. Let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. Um, we had okay, EPS came in at 0.46 versus 0.45 estimate. Sales beat, slight beat there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this stock trading higher again. So it's not all bad news this morning. We had some, you know, we had to get the Humana news out of the way. We had some other turbulence, but, um, you know, some other some other positives going into the day. Wow, wow, wow. Opening up at all-time highs. That's all I yep. can give you. Pair of highs at the 65, 66 area. If that was your target, that was an exact double top. More of a triple top or a quad top if you include all those other highs at the $65 area. So that's all I could give you on that. Trading up the nuts and bolts of the economy. 
Got to have the nuts and bolts if you're, you know, building anything. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll do. Maybe they'll, sign, all. maybe they'll sign a deal with Boeing to 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 do some. Uh, That'd you know, be a good one, eh? To do, oh, to, oh, to, to oh, do some fast and all. We'll door tighten bolts. those night nuts and bolts for you there, fast and all. Yeah, there you go. Sign a sign a contract. <laughs> what about there. what about Discover? This is your disaster stock of the day. We haven't covered it here yet. It is weighing on financials here today. DFS coming out with earnings last night. A B doesn't look good no uh discover again those uh that report came out yesterday after the close i mean is this so when discover what's the numbers I... give us the numbers all right numbers we came in eps came in at uh or let's see gap eps came in at 1.54 misses by 93 cents revenue Ooh. of 4.2 billion actually beat by 90 million but again that huge eps miss let's see if we had uh, any guidance or anything as well, but um, what? So, Discover Financial Services. You, you mentioned the financial sector. I mean, is it looked at more of a? Because I know Discover does a bunch of different things, but I looked at more of like a pure credit card play, or they do all of the banking stuff as well. Well, I believe they do the banking behind it, so you can't look at Mastercard and Visa are different businesses where they just process the transactions, right? And they send the credit risk to somebody else. I believe Discover keeps this on the book, some of this. Also, American Express and COF run similarly, which is why you see those pair trade very well together here. Um, you're, it's obviously concerning. Credit loss is surging, they're talking about. So even though the consumer is healthy and spending, apparently some of these consumers are not paying their bills. And that's why you're seeing DFS get hit here to the tune of 7%. Um, also, like I just said, American Express trading down slightly in the pre-market, not too bad. It's down about 60 cents. Capital One, more direct peer, it's down $2 here in the pre-market trading at 124. They were off their after hours lows, all three of these stocks, but still hit pretty hard here. I'm not sure I'm buying this uh, dip here on DFS. Way off the low. Way, 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 way off the pre-market low. You hit 96 bucks, and you just got to pop up. So there's one level for you, uh, 96. I think just the way you bounce five bucks off it, you're going to will find buyers ahead of it. If you're looking for more on the upside, 101 has been your rebound <laughs> high. So there's your... Uh, your range for the day. Uh, if you want to just hold out for the, like the whole 50% retracement of the recent move that comes in around the $96, $97 area, but just got a nice, nice bounce off that pre-market low. So looking for a little back and fill here in Discover Financial Services. Dennis, take your hand off the sell button here. We are now 14 handles off the pre-market high. Did we get the... We get some selling balances here. Or what what uh, what's pushing us lower? Um, just leaking here after the number. I mean, always keep an eye on your TLT, which has started to leak here. That obviously, to Mark's point, to our point that we've made for the last six months on this show is that definitely leads the IWM. IWM starting to leak. TLT as TLT breaks down to new lows on the move or getting close to it. Ninety four sixteen, the low yesterday. Ninety four twenty six. Um, the stocks that care the most about interest rates are those small cap stocks because they're obviously very dependent on easy money. And if money is getting a little bit tighter, as in long-term rates going up with TLT going down, that knocks the IWM down. So TLT, IWM linked at the hip. We can clearly, clearly see today tech not participating in the sell-off. Tech is holding up very well. We have Apple, which has given back basically nothing since the market started selling off here. Microsoft yep. also getting an upgrade is trading significantly higher. Tech across the board off the a piggybacking off the of Taiwan Semiconductor is very strong here today. So you're starting to see what I would call separation. You're starting to see consumer staples get hit. We know healthcare has been getting hit all morning because of Humana. We know banks are starting to leak here, starting to go red. Oil, which cannot catch a bed, does seems like it's the most hated thing ever. XLE breaking down to new. Uh, lows on the move here yesterday, not wow. catching a bit here today either. So if I'm looking at my S and P and I've got you know 200 stocks sitting up here, I can clearly see staples, healthcare, banks starting to show weakness, oil starting to show weakness, um, and what is clearly strong here today is technology. Okay, someone asked for levels on UNH. I just want to remark here that Humana has 
kind of dis distance itself from that area a little bit. So still like that that 380 level, 380. Got to give it a range, 380 really to 385. Uh, for UNH, who is uh, suffering because of the Humana news, uh, that has, uh, I, I like 500 here. Uh, 499.92 uh, is your pre-market low. You're three bucks away from there. Also had a daily low at right at that $500 level. So, I mean, it's getting hit. I mean, this is not the company that delivered the news, but it is getting hit with it. So we'll be looking at it. And uh, Mark mentioned uh, CVS is traded down four bucks. Uh, very uh, good support at the $70 area. But watch your leader. Your leader will be Humana. Then, as you mentioned, uh, the bank stocks. We did have uh, bank earnings at the end of last week, earlier this week. And uh, it's time to dial up Nate Tobik. Uh, oddball Stocks Report will be coming on and talking about the earnings from the banking sector on tomorrow's show. Yeah, and we do have some more. Uh, at least like Regions Bank, Ally Bank, Comerica, and Huntington will report tomorrow before the open. So uh, good day to bring them on, Joel. Good job there. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that'll be a wrap for Benzinga's pre-market prep today. It is now 9.01, 9.02 a.m. Eastern, so the market will open 28 minutes. Please smash the like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thank you to our guest, Mark Chaikin from Chaikin Analytics this morning. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Joel. Peace, guys. We'll be back.